Hello, good morning viewers. Let me show you how you can solve these two equations by substitution. But before we start, why do we even need to solve it by substitution? I think for me, I have two reasons for doing that. Number one, we are so lucky that the terms we have under the bracket are exactly the same. So we can substitute them with something like A, B, C and so on. Secondly, expanding these terms will give us very large numbers. For example, if you expand x plus 5 raised to the power of 4, you're going to get something like uh, x to the power of 4 plus 20x to the power of 3 plus 150x squared plus 500x plus 625. Can you see we have five terms with some larger numbers and we still have another one here that we need to expand. So we need a lot of simplification before solving this problem. But let us just substitute and see. Um, let me start with the first one. So here is our first problem for substitution because the terms here are exactly the same. So I can let them to be equal to something else. So let u equal to x plus 5. So in the end, we are going to solve the equation in terms of u. But since originally it was in terms of x, we have to substitute this back in the end. So if u is equal to x plus 5, wherever we have x plus 5, it is going to be replaced by u. So this becomes u to the power of 4 minus 16 multiplied by u to the power of 2 and the whole of this equal to 0. Now we have a simple equation. So now we can factorize the left hand side. The highest common factor here is u squared. So we have u squared outside and inside we have u to the power of 4 divided by u squared is just u squared minus 16 u squared divided by u squared is just 16. And this is equal to 0. So uh, what we have here is just u squared multiplied by u squared minus 16 equal to 0. The same thing we normally apply to quadratic equations. Whenever you have two factors multiplying each other and the result is zero, it implies that one of the factors is zero or all of them are zero. So we are going to set each factor here to be equal to zero. Uh, let me start with u squared. So u squared could either be zero or u squared minus 16 equal to zero. We don't have problem with this because if you take square root of both sides, you have u equal to 0 because square root of 0 is 0. Uh, but for the other one, we have to solve it u squared equal to 16 if negative 16 crosses over. Uh, and now we can take the square root of both sides u alone equal to plus or minus square root of 16. Why I didn't apply plus or minus here? Minus 0 is still 0, plus 0 is still 0. So we don't have to apply that there. Square root of 16 is 4. So u could either be 4 positive or u equal to 4 negative. So now that we have three values of u, we can go ahead and substitute them back here where we have let u to be equal to x plus 5. So if if u is equal to x plus 5, we are going to find the values of x when u is 0 equal to 4 equal to negative 4. Let's start with 0. This implies that x plus 5 can be 0 or x plus 5 can also be equal to 4. Or last one, x plus 5 equal to negative 4. So we are going to solve them separately. For the first one, if 5 crosses over, it becomes negative. So x here equal to negative 5. We are done with this. Or from here, if 5 crosses over, it becomes negative. So we have 4 minus 5, which is negative 1. So here x is equal to negative 1. And the last one, if 5 crosses over, it becomes negative. So we have negative 4, negative 5, which is negative 9. So we have negative 9 here. So these are the three possible solutions for this quartic equation. X could either be negative 5, negative 1, or negative 9. 
So now let us take the second problem. The second problem, we are given that 3x plus 5 to the power of 4 minus 3x plus 5 to the power of 3 equal to 0. And we want to find the value of x that can satisfy this equation. So here we are. Let me substitute. Let this time around, let me use another letter. Let us use y equal to 3x plus 5. So that our equation now becomes y to the power of 4 minus y to the power of 3. This is equal to 0. Can you see that now we have a very simple equation? And to factorize the left hand side, the highest common factor will be y to the power of 3. So we have uh, y to the power of 3 here. Then inside we have y minus 1. And this is equal to 0. So we are going to set h to be equal to 0. The first one, y to the power of 3 equal to 0. Or y minus 1 equal to 0. For this one, we are going to take the cube root of both sides. Cube root of y to the power of 3 is y. And cube root of 0 is 0. And for the other one, all you have to do is to take this negative 1 to the right. And we have y equal to positive 1. But remember, our y was 3x plus 5. So if y is equal to 3x plus 5, how can we get the value of x? So we set 3x plus 5 to be equal to 0 or 3x plus 5 equal to 1. From here, you can take this to the right. It becomes negative. So we have 3x equal to negative 5. And uh, if you divide both sides by 3, you have x equal to negative 5 divided by 3. And for the other one, take this to the right, it becomes negative. So we have 1 minus 5, which is negative 4. So 3x equal to negative 4. If you divide both sides by 3, you have x equal to negative 4 divided by 3. And hence, the two solutions we have here are x equal to negative 5 divided by 3 or x equal to negative 4 divided by 3. And hence, this is our solution for this quartic equation. And this is all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Do share to your learning colleagues. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more exciting videos. Bye-bye.